Okay, enough talk about madness, uh, at least personal madness. Let's talk about madness that is uh, going to occur in uh, Florida this week, right? The CPAC Circle Jerk is here once again. Where are they having it this year? I think someplace in Florida. I don't think, uh, I don't think it's in uh, New York. I, I'm sorry, in, uh, in D.C. But um, you know what it is, the... Uh, yeah, it's in Orlando. Um, <laughs> Orlando. Disney World and the rest of the stuff there, right? Um, it, but you probably know what CPAC is. That is this massive mutual masturbation uh, event, a circle jerk, if you will, um, where all the Republican, or uh, I should say conservative, well, no, the Christian fascists now, now that the party, the Republican Party is dead, and all that remains are a few stumbling zombies. Um, but the Christian fascist convocation this year is in uh, Orlando, Florida, where the CPAC, they still call themselves conservatives, although they are as removed from conservatism as I am. They are more into devil worship. The devil being, well, you know, this bloated bastard that squats over there at Mar-a-Lago. But I digress. The, uh, the panel this year various panels to get together. It's a long weekend, I guess. It start, starts today, tonight, and goes through Sunday. But it'll uh, among the topics up for discussion is Donald Trump. And another topic is Donald Trump. And later on, a third topic, topic will be Donald Trump. There's another group meeting over there that will be discussing Donald Trump, and a group back here who will be discussing Donald Trump. So you can see it's going to be a very productive uh, CPAC Christian fascist circle jerk. One panel will discuss whether tech companies are, quote, colluding to deprive us of our humanity. End quote. Oh. <sighs> when, when I see some of these captions, some of these titles of what the discussion groups are going to be about, I have to pause for a moment and, and, and just make sure I'm not in some sort of a fractious nightmare. Um, but that's the real title. Um, an, another uh, 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 panel will explore what to do when a social media network, quote, de-platforms, end quote, a conservative by de deleting his account. I, I, I love this shit, you know. Nobody gets deleted because they're conservative, you dumb shits, you get deleted because you're a Nazi, you're a fascist, you're a Christian, violent, out-of-control cultist. That's why you get deleted. Uh, and also, there will be seven main stage panels. Nothing peripheral about this, man. Not tucked back over here in room uh, 819 or down the hall. Seven main stage panels or speeches will litigate the 2020 presidential election with the panelists who will be arguing, of course, that the orange bastard won. What else are they going to say? The orange bastard will be watching their every move. And they are terrified of the orange bastard. Um, now, the, the, the CPAC convention started out as kind of a, a fractious meeting of, uh, of Republicans and Libertarians and uh, neocons. And it's turned into, this year, a celebration. A celebration! A, a, a gathering of, of, of exuberant Christian fascists to celebrate the 45th president and, of course, airing his grievances because the poor schmuck never gets a chance to talk about how mean everybody was to him. You know, the Democrats and the liberals and the media, the fake news media and everybody, they just always picked on him, picked on him. Poor bastard. Ah. <sighs> Now, the high point of this mutual masturbation society gathering 
will be the close of the event when the Orange Master will give his first speech since um, um, leaving the White House. And his little speech will come minutes after a 2024 presidential straw poll that will be conducted among the uh, Master Batiz, if that's how you pronounce it, the people there who will be uh, there to uh, self-pleasure and at the same time smile at everybody and talk about how they were all screwed, so to speak. But it's expected that the Orange Bastard will win the straw poll, the 2024 <laughs> president. <laughs> you know, I just, I have this deep and abiding and joyful feeling. It's almost glorious to come 2024, Trump won't even be alive. Really. Uh, it's, it's similar to the feeling I had uh, not quite, but similar to the feeling I had when the pig man, Limbaugh, departed this earthly coil and went straight to hell, do not pass go, where I'm sure he's uh, in this imaginary place that the Christian fascists have constructed. I'm sure Limbaugh is trying to convince Satan to be a little more strict with the minor races that go to hell. Yada, yada. Uh, anyway... The arguments among some elected Republicans, oh, this is a David Weigel is reporting on this for the Washington Post. I'll be curious to see how he reports it over the next three or four days. But he says the arguments among some elected Republicans about whether they should retool their agenda to prevent further losses or cozy up even more with the orange bastard. They're not sure what to do yet, what to do, what to do. I think a lot of these uh, Christian fascists keep looking at that 75 million votes that the orange bastard got. And as he is um, so willing to tell you, if you will pause just a moment, that's the most votes that any sitting president has ever gotten in the history of this republic, which it damn sure is. But it wasn't enough to win, was it, schmuck? Huh? Oh, well. Anyway, Matt Schlapp. He's been around for a while. He's the chairman of the American Conservative Union, which organizes CPAC. It's their baby. It's their twisted concept of, of conservatives getting together to fillet each other and uh, join in this huge group of masturbators who, who, who think that they're having sex when they're just playing with themselves. I mean, that, that, that's the nearest uh, analogy I can come up with. But anyway, Matt Schlapp said, quote, the idea that we're going to come up with some kind of conservative platform at CPAC, well, that rings a little hollow. Right now, he says, Half the country feels cheated by the media coverage of the election. <laughs> so, he goes on, we're going to go back and cover the facts that most people in the media canceled. <laughs> yeah, you know, I just, it's amazing. The liberal fake news, they have so much power. They can cancel facts. I have heard... Now, don't hold me to this, because it may be idle rumor. But I have heard that just hundreds of members of the liberal, that's spelled L-I-B-R-U-L, liberal news fake media have decided to cancel gravity. That's right. And they can do it. Now, that'll make it much easier to get from point A to point B if you don't have to worry about gravity. Of course, you also have to worry about flying off into space, but um, canceling gravity is the next thing that the liberal news media is going to do. How about that? Ooh. Um, and as Dave Weigel points out, the facts haven't been very kind to the argument that... Uh, the election was stolen or the media canceled the facts. Uh, how many lawsuits, dozens of lawsuits, Trump's own Justice Department, the Supreme Court, who the fuck do they want to step down out of heaven and say, hey, listen up. <laughs> Trump lost the goddamn thing. Now leave me alone. I'm God. Get out of my way. Thum, 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 thum. <sighs> They've all found no, no evidence of any fraud last year that would have uh, 
uh, altered anything. But this is the thing about CPAC attendees. They are delusional first. I mean, that's the first requirement to be, um, well, to be a Christian fascist. You must be delusional. You must be easily led like, like a cow with a nose ring or a bull or whatever. You have to be willing to be pulled this way and that way and this way and that way against your will, with your will, it makes no difference. Well, oh, you also have to be a hypocrite. You have to do A and then accuse other people of doing A, but because they're doing A, they're going to hell. But because you do A, you're going to heaven. Oh, Lord, it's wonderful being a Christian fascist. Um, polling since November 3rd has shown... Uh, strong majorities of Republican voters agreeing with Trump about goddamn near everything and supporting his bullshit where it concerns the election. How can how how can that be? This this continues to to stagger me. How millions upon millions of people. After all the checking and rechecking and triple checking and Supreme Court checking and court checking and investigative checking and Justice Department checking and everything, the entire framework of democracy in this country has issued its, its, its final ruling. The election was fair and Trump lost. And yet millions of these half-witted morons are willing to suspend reality in order to suck up to Donald Trump's bulbous ass. What is that? I mean, that's be beyond the adulation paid to Hitler I, I, or Stalin or Mao. I mean, this is madness. Now, I realize that every cult leader has to rely on the insanity the willing nutsiness of his followers. Because without them, he's shit. He's just another bloated old white guy uh, playing golf on a golf course down in Florida. He doesn't amount to a pile of, 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 of anything. But when you have 75 million people, huh, huh, <laughs> believing that your election was stolen, well, maybe it's not 75 million. Maybe it's more like 50 million. Because I don't think everybody who voted for this schmuck actually believes the election was stolen from him. But I may be wrong. Um, but how do you do that? How do you convince people? Well, they have to be willing to be convinced. The willing suspension of disbelief. It, it's just like watching a magician or a magic sh uh, or, or, or a movie. Or you, you've got to be a participant in your own trickery. You have to be. If you are a total skeptic, if you are, say, uh, uh, someone who goes around proving that uh, Ari Geller is, is a fake or is he the one that proves they're fakes, I don't know. But if you're the one who goes around proving that people are, are fakes, magicians and illusionists, then... Um, how do you convince millions of people that their exalted beloved leader is nothing but a bloated pile of nothing? He stands for nothing. He, he represents traitorous behavior. He represents chaos and death and disease. Uh, well, it's beyond me. Hi, Truth Seekers. Mike Malloy here. As you know, we've switched formats and are now broadcast exclusively on the Progressive Voices Network. So that means you get fewer program interruptions, no corporate commercials, and lots of profanity. But our format change also means some of our radio listeners no longer hear the program. It's been a while since I mentioned our podcasts, so you may have forgotten that there is a way to listen to this program anytime you need a good dose of screaming. Visit MikeMalloy.com and subscribe to our podcast. As a podcast subscriber, you can download the program to your mobile device and take me with you wherever you go. And if you have a friend who needs a dose of truth-seeking, you can give a gift subscription as well. That's MikeMalloy.com and never miss a minute of the uncensored fun and frivolity.